I can tell the expression on their face they need help, but they don't really know how to approach it. I say, can I lend you a hand? And they'll leave me and go, uh, I don't believe he said that. <laughs> oh, I'm proud. Well, sometimes they have a line contest. Yeah. And I think I've won it every time. Tell me some why. <laughs> I just told you. Oh. <laughs> we got the map in our hand and Jesus at the wheel. And everybody get on board. Hello and welcome to our show. Hi there, glad you could join us. Yes, most of our ID21 shows have a theme and uh, we've talked about things on previous shows like domestic violence and promise keepers and chemical addiction. Right, but no theme today. No today theme. it's potpourri time. That's right. And according to Webster, a potpourri means a collection of sweet smelling flower petals. Or it could mean just a mixed collection. But today on the show, it means a mixed collection of sweet-smelling stories. Oh, well, this is one of my favorite. This is about a man who encourages people, right. and uh, this is one you're going to talk We're with. We're calling Mr. Encourager. That's right. We also, do. Lonnie Williams will be here. He has no arms, no legs, and teaches high school art. All right, and Larry went to a barber shop, and uh, he talked with a man who keeps cuckoo clocks. Right. And we'll meet a lady who washes and blow dries her chickens. Her chickens. You got it. And finally, a group that is so dedicated to its music. That's a little bit later in the show. And they're called? Dedication. You got it. Stay tuned. ID21 is on the air. That's right. It's impossible not to care for somebody that, that cares as much as he does about you. I mean, Chuck, Chuck loves the players on the team. He loves the program, and the players love Chuck. You know, we all need to be encouraged. Yes, we do. And some people, though, just have a special knack for lifting yes, spirits. Yes, and one person who really has that knack is Chuck Ross. Yes. If there's a basketball game going on or a baseball game, he's there to encourage. That's right. Here is Mr. Encourager. If there was ever somebody who was truly a definition of a true fan, that would be Chuck Ross. No matter what happens, Chuck is here and he's cheering for us. Chuck doesn't care if you play two minutes a game or, or 38 minutes a game. He's going to cheer for you and he thinks, you know, he thinks you're great either way. And that's what a real fan is, is somebody who cares about you, whether you win, whether you lose, whether you're a star, whether you're a sub. It doesn't matter to Chuck. And, and that's what a true fan is. I thought we played real good tonight. Real good ball team. I can tell so many stories uh, about Chuck, and, and he is not, he is a, he's devious, he's manipulative, he's a con man, but it's all in the spirit of Christian love. I remember take, we have to take him home in the ice storm sometimes, or his mama had a car wreck one year. Year we won it, and Jerry Bridges and I got to get to take him home. And, and I said, Chuck, what do you like best about being a, Chris being a Christian? He said, well, going to church and Christian ball games. <laughs> and that's pretty much Chuck's life. He's just been through a lot. He is an encourager, and that's his, his purpose. When he runs down that hallway to make that talk in the team room, you don't get in his road, and he's fired up, and we're going to beat whoever the nickname is. And, he tries to find the speech, and it, it makes those, lets those kids have a chance to be kids. Let's go, fans! Let's, let's go get those! Let's go get those mighty pulled up and beat them and beat them fast! Let's go get them and beat them and beat them fast! Beat them and beat them fast! Beat them and beat them fast! Come to there! Come to there! Yeah, it's impossible not to care for somebody that, that cares as much as he does about you. I mean, Chuck. Chuck loves the players on the team. He loves the program, and the players love Chuck. And we give Chuck a hard time, but we give Chuck a hard time just like uh, you'd give a member of your family a hard time. It's all right for you to pick on your brother or your sister, but let anybody else do it, and it's going to be trouble. And that's kind of the way we feel about Chuck. You know, 
we can kind of kid around and he can kid around with us, but let anybody else, uh, you know, let anything happen to Chuck from outside the team and, and he's going to have 12 guys looking out for him. Well, I know what turns me. We got to play ball. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what does confidence mean? <laughs> well, you got to think. You got to use your mind. There you go. Yeah. 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 No. Let's make plays, man. Well, you got to make plays. You got to got to do what the coach tells you to do. You know, when he, uh, we had to have some uh, Wednesday night devotionals in the playoffs, and when he reads the Bible, you know, that, that when he reads the Bible, that they listen because I think it just makes you appreciate what you have. Chuck's done a lot and had a big impact on a lot of people without having all the advantages some of us have. Um, maybe he's been blessed in that way. Some of us, maybe we can't handle everything we got, but uh, he's in Lipscomb's Hall of Fame. He richly deserves to be there. Um, he has not just impacted Nash uh, Lipscomb, he's impacted Nashville. You got to run that what for? Yeah. yeah. has been an encouragement in your life? Um, Moby Dick. Moby Dick? Yeah. Wow. Just keeps on coming. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who's been encouraging you? A high school teacher years ago used to encourage us by throwing out a racer at us. Yeah. Like that. We'll be right back. Some people have asked me the question, uh, don't you hate God for making you without arms and legs? And I, you know, I, 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 I'm kind of flabbergasted at first because I say, no, why? Born without legs below his thighs and no arms below his elbows, Lonnie Williams goes through life just a little bit differently. Nothing seems to stop him. He drives a car, he has a black belt in karate, and he's a high school art teacher. Right. So get ready to be inspired by these special strokes. Some people have asked me the question, uh, don't you hate God for making you without arms and legs? And I, you know, I, I, I'm kind of flabbergasted at first because I say, no, why? And they say, well, you know, you have such hardships and it's so difficult for you to do this, that, and the other. And I said, yes, but um, being that the good Lord wanted me here on earth with no arms and no legs, I'm glad I was born that way for several reasons. Number one, um, I didn't have to go through a car accident to lose them. I didn't go through a great deal of pain uh, in losing them. Um, I didn't have to go through a war and lose them. And when you stop and think about it, hey, you're blessed. You know, that's how I see it. You know, the good Lord's been good to me. I have a good mind. Um, and there's been times when I thought, hey, this is impossible. You know, it just can't be done. Um, where there's a will, there's a way. And. Anytime you, that you pray and, and lean toward uh, Jesus to help you, he, he'll be there. He likes to joke around. He, does, he likes to make people feel that his, his not having arms or legs is, is not really a handicap to him and they should look at him as a normal person. Pretty much the first six weeks of school, they're very timid and shy. Now, as you well know, I, I joke a lot with my students and this is why. You know, I may be doing something, and, or they may be doing something. I can tell the expression on their face they need help, but they don't really know how to approach it. I say, can I lend you a hand? And they look at me and go, uh, I don't believe he said that, <laughs> you know. But that's why I do that. I begin to look and, and think my job's tough at times and begin to think, uh, uh, I guess, the woe is me attitude. And uh, uh, you, you look at somebody with Mr. Williams and the heart and soul that he puts into it and a smile on his face and uh, it just makes things go back in their proper perspective and uh, uh, you realize that uh, you've been blessed in the heat and you've been blessed to be around such an individual as him. As I was growing up, I always uh, hoped that I'd find the right lady someday and get married. I've had people tell me, uh, you know, who'd want to marry you? You know, people can be very cruel sometimes, but uh, there's also in the same breath, I want to say there's an awful lot of good people out there, too. Uh, you know, it happened. I met the right person, and, and uh, we got married. Uh, my wife's name's Pat, and uh, we have a little boy that's 11 years old. His name's Christopher. And yes, he does have all of his arms and legs. It's not hereditary. 
what a lot of people would consider uh, a handicap or a disability is not really so. It's really the opposite. It's a blessing. It's, you know, I'm, I'm not only educating students uh, to draw and paint and, and to do art, but um, I'm also able to help teach students, hey, look, you know, you don't look at a person for what's outside. You look at a person for what's inside, inside their heart and inside their soul and uh, what type of person they are. And it's, it's, it's irrelevant to what type of, whether they have arms and legs or they don't have arms and legs or whether they have one leg missing or one arm missing. Um, you look at the person for what they are. I enjoy them too. So now I have about, I believe it's close to 60. Well, Larry has once again dug into his collection of Saturn Friends classics mm -hmm. and come up with not just one, but two. And which one do you have for us now? Well, if you like barbershops. I do. If you like checkers. Yes. If you like cuckoo clocks, mm -hmm, then you'll like Sam Hanna. Yeah. I ran into Sam at his barbershop in Dixon, Tennessee. Here's the first of two Saturn Friends classics. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little love with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer, we'll turn it. Makes it right. Come right in. Come right in. You know what time it is here? Well, it depends on which clock you're looking at. That one's at 10, 1, 2, and 1, 4. Mm -hmm. I bought one about 20 years ago, and uh, I have some children who just won't be quiet, they cry, you know, trying to get a haircut. And that cuckoo clock kind of quieted him down a little bit, so I bought another one. I enjoy them too, so now I have about, I believe it's close to 60. You gonna get any more? Well, if I find some, uh, you know, the price is not too high, I might buy some more. We have a checker game every, about every day. Every day except Saturday. We don't play on Saturday. Say, would you like to challenge me to a game of checkers? Yeah, I sure would. Are you the champion? I'm pretty good. You pretty good? No, I'm just fair. All right, let's start. <laughs> He's a figuring this thing out, ain't he? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See that cuckoo clock there? It will be going off in about 10 minutes. Oh, well, sometimes they have a line contest. Yeah. And I think I've won it every time. Uh, tell me some why. <laughs> I just told you. Oh. <laughs> Come back to see us, too. Well, as you can tell, there's some real good checker players in Dixon, Tennessee, and you can see why we call this segment the Just for Fun segment. Yes, yes, but that was just one. What's Correct. coming up next? Well, it's right there. You tell them. All right, well, it says if a clean chicken is a happy chicken, then Mary Dunlap may have the happiest flock of chickens in Tennessee. And every month, she hand washes and blow dries her 25 feathered friends. That's correct. All right, from the archives. Here's Southern Friends and classic number two. <laughs> 
Our whole family loves chickens, and I particularly love chickens and, and pigeons. Here, babies, come on up. Wee, time to go. <laughs> there you go, babies. Wee. They're real good to pet and to just hold and hug, and they feel good and soft and cuddly. Also, uh, we do eat them, and they're very, you haven't tasted chicken till you taste backyard chicken and backyard eggs. And just because I have to eat them doesn't mean I don't love the little things. <laughs> no point not giving it a good life just because its good destiny is to feed us. I'm going to put the chicken down in the water and get it wet. It's got sort of oily feathers. And I want to get its top knot wet, so I hold it like this upside down and <laughs> with its head in the water, which I'm sure it doesn't like, but she's a good girl. I can tell when they're good and clean because they feel slippery, but as long as they feel kind of sticky, they need a little more shampoo. Now we turn it upside down. <laughs> what a relaxed chicken. Now let's try its little top knot. Mm -mm. Just like drying a wool sweater. And she feel real good when she's all through. <laughs> yep, been washing them and drying them about uh, five years. Now the chicken is very nice and clean, spotless, and even kissing clean. Ooh, smells good too. I'm Larry Souter, and that's Souter and Friends. Get on board, the train's about to leave and it's headed up the heavenly way. Get on board and don't be late, cause the Lord can't wait all day. Well, welcome back. A very special singing group on ID21 today. They call themselves Dedication, and we'll find out why in just a minute. But first off, we'll find out who they are. What is your name? Uh, my name is Gary Hale. Gary, welcome. Jeff Scott. Jeff. Randy Hatchett. Randy. Ron Hatchett. Ron. Rex Barker. Rex. Oh, Rex <laughs> Good Barker. to have you here. All right. Goodness. Dedication. Now, what, what do you fellas think that you are? What, what is dedication? We're dedicated to the Lord and I Let's find out about dedication. How did this all begin? Well, the name dedication basically came from former groups we had been involved with. You're the bass with. man, aren't you? You're the right, bass man, right, aren't right. you? All right. Yeah. And uh, we, we knew how right. much dedication it actually takes once you start a family and you have a regular job. Yeah. And so we just thought that was a perfect name because it, it does take dedication to, to you know, put the time into the group. So this is not a full-time no, job just, here? Just a fun hobby. Would you like for it to be? In our dreams. Yeah. Really? Do you, all, do you all go to the same church? Is that how you met no, each no. other? Four of us went to the same uh, college, though, Freed Hardeman College in Henderson, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So we uh, knew each other somewhat, but not real well. Could I be in a group like this? Do you need a sixth person? Sure do. But you, got, you have to be able to <laughs> sing, though, there. <laughs> So you're not really looking actively for somebody then, huh? What's well, it's kind of funny the way we became from four to five. Uh, uh, there was originally uh, four of us discounting Jeff, and Jeff was uh, uh, moved into Nashville and was working, started working the sound for us in shows. And he noticed that at spots we were sort of thin. <laughs> you could hear our breathing, and, and uh, he might thin from the board mm -hmm. and started singing a, a fifth part uh, that really blended, really uh, added a lot of uh, depth to it. And uh, when the crowd started detecting that there's four guys singing, but there's a fifth voice coming from somewhere else. We decided it was time for him to, to get the same colored shirt and get on stage. Plus, so. he owned the equipment, so we yeah. had <laughs> right. That was the real reason. Right. Yeah. We couldn't run him out. It was his equipment. I used to be in a group called His Image Quartet mm -hmm. uh, back a long time ago, and I was associated with Keith Lancaster, and me and him used to do uh, some songwriting together. And uh, So now me and my brother are writing together, 
and we send our songs to to Keith, and he uh, produces the group called Acapella, and so he's been uh, you know listening to our songs, and they've recorded uh, a few. They're, they're putting out worship and praise albums, and they've used several of our songs, uh, worship and praise songs. So you're pitching songs to that group and other groups as well. We have one song on our latest tape called "Get On Board," mm -hmm. and the uh, Dixie Melody Boys, Southern Gospel group, heard the song. And they put that on one of their tapes. And now, from the album, Getting Ready to Go, the song is called Get On Board. Hit it, boys. Get on board, the train's about to leave and it's headed up the heavenly way. Get on board and don't be late, cause the Lord can't wait all day. He told us in his book how to travel that road that leads to the promised land. We got the map in our hand and Jesus at the wheel. Everybody get on board. The train is here. Everybody draw near and listen to the gospel call. If you ride this train, you got a lot to gain. And the Lord wants to take us all. We're gonna ride up high. We will never say goodbye to the one who paid the price to ride. You better get your ticket cause you don't want to miss it. Gonna be the ride of your life. Get on board, the train's about to leave and it's headed up the heavenly way. Get on board and don't be late, cause the Lord can't wait all day. He told us in his book how to travel that road that leads to the promised land. We got the map in our hand and Jesus at the wheel, everybody get on board. This train is bound for glory, this train is bound for glory, this train is bound for glory, this train is bound for glory. But the righteous and the holy, this, this train, train is bound for glory, this train, and we're not going to stop, going to stop till we get, till we get, till we get to the mountain top, we're going to see the Lord, get on board, the train's about to leave and it's headed up the heavenly way, get on board and don't be late, cause the Lord can't wait all day, he told us in his book, Travel that road that leads to the promised land. We got the map in our hand and Jesus at the wheel. Everybody get on board. We got the map in our hand and Jesus at the wheel. And everybody get on board. We hope you enjoyed today's Potpourri ID 21. Yes, and if you have a suggestion for future programs on ID 21, drop us a line. Join us next week for another edition of ID, ID 21. 21. Whatever that means, we don't know. See you later. Because the Lord came late all day. He told us in his book how to travel that road that leads to the promised land. We got the map in our hand and Jesus at the wheel. Everybody get on board. We got the map in our hand and Jesus at the wheel. And everybody get on board.